and welcome back to another video here with angel b designs if you are new welcome if you're not welcome back um so today i'm gonna do a bling shirt i'm gonna do this um well it's gonna be a, a sweatshirt like this but i'm gonna do another one i have been posting a lot of uh bling content like on instagram i did a short the other day um and i had a lot of people commenting asking if i could do a full tutorial on it uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, I'm gonna I am gonna recreate this same template that I already cut out um, on a white on a white sweatshirt. But I'm also gonna show you. I'm gonna cut out another template, and I'm gonna show you how I cut out my templates as well with my Cricut machine. So we're gonna do all of that today, and then if this so this temp this other template that I bought that I'm gonna show you how to cut today, it is kind of more complex. So we're gonna see how it turns out. If it's a mess, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go ahead and bling it. But if it's not, if it ends up working out, then I will bling the template that I'm about to show you how to cut. Otherwise, I am gonna do this template again. I did get this template from Patrice on uh, from Craft uh, Craftable Things. I will try to remember to link her Etsy shop down below. Um, if you would like to purchase this template, but. Yeah, we're gonna bling today. So, oh, and my bling that I'm using is from Eve at the Baby's Booty. I'm gonna show you a close up of all of these, but um, that's where I get all of my bling from. Like I said, I'll show you a close up so that you can see the colors on the shirt I'm going to bling, and then I'll show you the colors that I also use for this hoodie as well. Okay, so if you wanna learn how to bling, go ahead and stick around. Okay guys, so I'm in Cricut Design Space, which is how I'm going to go ahead and cut out this template. This is the template that I purchased from Etsy. Um, so the size of it is 10.7. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it that size one. I don't wanna mess up the holes. If you, one thing about resizing that I kind of had to learn the hard way, you can't resize the image, okay? Whatever the image size is, you pretty much have to keep it that way. Um, at least in Cricut Design Space. If you try to make it bigger or smaller, you're going to mess up the sizing of the holes. Now, you may be able to upload it like in a um, designing software program that specifically does deals with rhinestones um, and then kind of readjust it that way if you need to. Um, but in Cricut Design Space, I would absolutely not... I would suggest not messing with the sizing. Whatever this, they tell you the size is, that's what it needs to be in Cricut Design Space. Um, so like I said, the whole design's um, image, this is the size 10.7 by 7.5, which for my large um, uh, sweatshirt that I'm doing, that's a pretty decent size. So I don't need to worry about changing it or anything like that. Now, this template did upload like with these little backgrounds here. <laughs> um, you can cut from here, but, um, I feel like cutting all of these little squares here is going to cost you like a lot more flock. Um, so I'm just going to go and go ahead and hide those for now. And then these are the layers that I'm going to cut. So there is one, two, three, four, five different layers in this image, which means I'm going to use five different colored rhinestones. <sighs> okay, I may do this in the neon colors. I'm not sure. I haven't decided on the colors yet, but I'm going to go ahead and try this. Y'all, I've never done a template that had this many um, different layers or colors in it. So this is my first time doing five layers. Um, but yeah, we're going to see how it works out. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I haven't resized this at all. I haven't touched it. All I did was hide all of these little boxes. That's all I did. I'm going to go over to make it. And I'm going to cut on mat and I'm going to do a 12 by 24 because I want to see if I can get all of these to cut on one mat so that I can just go ahead and load one piece of flock. So I don't know, I may have to do two, but we'll see. The only thing I'm scared of is I don't, how am I going to, oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of anxiety, but I can do it. I can do it. Um, 
yeah i may have to do this in two different cuts i think it's going to be too big to fit all on one 12 by 24 mat but i'm going to do as many as i can on one cut so i can do three layers on one mat how am i going to know which piece goes where <sighs> okay so this is going to be the first mat it's going to be completely filled up so it's going to you know i'm just going to cut it here with a pair of scissors cut it here with a pair of scissors and then um i'm going to go ahead and put these two on the same mat so it's going to be two different cuts it may take a little while to cut but that's okay okay and then that's going to be another piece of flock here so i'm going to go over to this first one i'm going to go to continue well, let me turn on my maker. Um, it's going to take a minute to connect to the Bluetooth. I don't know why mine, mine takes so long. Um, but I am going to cut this on. Uh, I created a material flocked iron on. And um, the settings, the cut settings I have for that, I did turn it all the way up to 350. And then I do cut on more pressure um, just because I try to get the rhinestone, the flock dots, the little holes, I try to get them to cut all the way through. Most of the time they don't. I don't think I've ever had it to where all of the holes cut the all the way through. Um, so I'm going to go to, like I said, flocked iron on, which let me show you. If you go to your materials down here where it says um, material settings, my little bar is in the way. Hold on. Right here where it says material settings, you're going to click that. And it's going to bring up all of your materials. Now, I have um, flocked iron on. Where is it? Right here. So this is these numbers here. This is the cut pressure. And then this is the number of passes. And this is the blade type. Okay. So for the flocked iron on, where is it? Here it is. The cut pressure is 350, which is the highest that it can go. I only do one pass and then I do use the fine point blade. If you want to edit any of these, you would just go over here to edit. Or if you add in a new material, you can just um, edit it that way as well. Like if you wanted to use a different blade or you want to do multiple passes or you want to change this, you would do it here. But these are the settings that I use, 350, one pass um, with the fine point blade. So I just select flocked iron on, and then I do use more pressure, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get this loaded onto my mat, um, and we're gonna, I'm going to get it to start cutting. While that's cutting, we're going to go ahead and bling the um, Keep God First shirt. Um, so yeah, I will meet you over at my craft table, and we will get started. So what I do with my templates, I know a lot of people use the um, uh, the mats from Dollar Tree. Um, I just put mine on the on the back of a piece of cardstock. So I have a um, little booklet of cardstock. Let me see if I can find it. So I just have like a little, uh, it's a paper pad. This is all cardstock. It's uh, 12 by 12 inches. It has 48 sheets in here. I did get it from Michaels, but I just go buy one of these and I um, stick the flock on the back of a piece of cardstock and that's my template. And then I just put them all like in a folder or a binder if I need um, to just kind of house it or whatever. But this is the template that I have. You can store it however you know you want to store it. Okay, so the colors that I use for the sweatshirt that I'm wearing now, I use the Crystal AB, and these are all SS10s. I use Crystal AB for the outline, and then I use this Violet Ice. This is the Violet Ice. So pretty. And then I used um, Tanzanite 
AB. Was the one I used for this, the hoodie that I'm wearing today. So what I'm going to use for this white one, I'm going to use the SS, the crystal um, AB again for the outline. And then I'm going to, for the top part, I'm going to do regular tanzanite. And I'm going to do black diamond AB. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the Cricut Maker. Um, but these are the colors that I'm going to use today. Like I said, I do get these from Eve at the Baby's Booty. So, to I just pour the, the stones on there. When I first started doing this, I didn't pour a whole lot of stones because I just felt like I didn't really feel like cleaning up all the stones. But everybody was like, girl, if you don't just pour those stones on there. <clears throat> so it is easier to brush them in when you have a lot of them so I just pour a lot of stones and then I have a little it's, it's called an edge brush this is what it looks like I think I got these off of Amazon so, um, I wasn't able to find it like in my local Home Depot or Lowe's so I did just order it off of Amazon so this is what I use I'll try to remember to link this down below and you just brush in a circular motion until they all go into the holes. And then to kind of remove them, as I'm brushing in the circular motions, I always um, tend to kind of brush down as well to try to get them out the way. And then any ones that, you know, kind of either don't get put into the holes or they're upside down or whatever the case may be, um, I use a wax pen to get any excess off or fix any of them that need to be fixed. And um, I did get my wax pen from Amazon as well. They have some that were, um, you know, they're like really pretty wax pens and those ones are a little bit more pricier if you want the pretty ones. Um, if you just want a regular regular wax pen, uh, they do have some that they're like, it's a pack. I think you get like maybe five or ten in a pack, something like that. I can't remember exactly how many, but you get a pack of them for a certain amount of money. I think it's like five dollars or something like that. So I'm just brushing in circular motions as well as brushing in straight lines to remove the excess stones off the template at kind of simultaneously. Okay. So there is the crystal AB brush in and then I do have a couple missing over here on this side and I'm just gonna brush these out of my way so I don't spill them on the ground that would be tragic and then this is the wax pen I was talking about nothing you know nothing spectacular um, so I'm just gonna pick up actually I'm gonna pick up some stones that are on my template any extra ones and I'm just gonna place them there's like three little holes here that didn't get stones so I'm just gonna pick them up and move them okay I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see All right, so there's the template there. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> All right, and I'm just gonna move this out of my way. I'm gonna um, get. I'm gonna pick them up with the tape all at the same time. So I'm gonna brush in 
my other stones. <clears throat> and then this is the next one. I'm going to pick up these stones and then I'm going to speed this next process up where I'm brushing in these ones. I'll still record it. It's just going to be sped up. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> put these stones back. So I will come back when I get these ones brushed in. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and pick up my stones. And this is the uh, tape I use, the transfer tape. It's a rhinestone tape. I get it from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I will link it down below. I get the flock from Heat Transfer Warehouse as well. Um, and this will probably be the last time I use this piece specifically because I've used it 500 times already. Um, but the way that I do it is I just kind of put bend it into like a u shape or taco shape put it down and just spread it out fast you don't want to put it down and pick it up because your stones will get messed up and then you'll have to start over once you put it down you have to commit and you have to keep going you can't put it down and pick it back up your stones will just be all messed up and you'll have to rebrush them in okay so it's going to be like one one swoop so down and out down and out <laughs> okay so go into the middle and down like that and then I just kind of you know brush over it <coughs> brush over excuse me with my fingers and if there's any rhinestones that kind of get messed up or turned or anything like that I really just use like oh I have an extra stone right here I didn't see it so I got to grab that before I press it um, but I just kind of use my fingers to go over it and oh I have an extra stone right here too didn't see that one either either so I got to grab those before I press it. Um, but yeah, I just kind of press it down with my fingers, make sure all the stones are straight and none of them are turned over. And then I just pick it up and it should just all come up in one swoop. Um, and then I have an extra stone here. I'm going to grab it. I have an extra stone here. I'm just using some uh, tweezers to grab it. Hopefully y'all can hear me over this Cricut machine. And then there is another extra, here it is, right here. I'm just gonna grab it with my tweezers. Okay, and then I'm going to put this back on the backing while we pick up the other rhinestones. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. And here is the next one. And we're going to do the same thing down and out, down in the middle, and out like that. Um, this stone got moved. You see, I just kind of pop it back into place with my nail. And it's super easy to, you know, kind of maneuver them with your finger. Just do it. Make sure you do it before you pick it up. It's just easier to do it before you pick it up. Okay, that looks good. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up. Pull it gently. Don't like rip it because your stones might fly everywhere. And then I'm just going to place it on the backing while I pick up the last one. Which is this one here. And let me make sure this piece is long enough. 
And I don't think it is. No, this piece isn't long enough. I need another piece. Give me one second. I'm just, this is what the roll looks like. So these, these are, this is a new, um, like a brand new piece. I'm just going to cut it right off, but it comes in a roll. Yeah, that's big enough. So because this, uh, the other two pieces that I used, I have kind of used them before, so they weren't <clears throat> as sticky. This is a brand new one. So this, you have to commit even more with these brand new pieces because they are so, so sticky. Like you just, you have to commit. Okay. So same thing, down and out. Oh, and look, I missed these stones up at the top. So what I'm going to do to kind of fix that, because if I pick all these stones up, they're all going to be stuck to this transfer tape and I'm not rebrushing them in. So if you do what I did, which right here, <clears throat> the transfer tape here didn't cover these stones. So what I'm going to do. is I'm just going to cut off a thin piece from here and I'm going to add it. Right to the top. And you want to overlap it so that when you pull it up, it pulls up as one piece. Okay. Okay, so our first piece of flock just got finished cutting, so I have to load in the second piece. Okay, that looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. And then as you can see, the other, the second piece of tape that I put down came up with it, with no problem. So you just want to make sure that those two pieces overlap and you shouldn't have an issue with pulling it up. Okay. And then I'm just going to stick this on here again while we get our t-shirt prepped. Okay. So I'm going to get my heat press warming up and I will meet you guys over there. And I'm going to go ahead and load in my second piece of flock as well. Okay. So I actually wanted to show you guys this, um, this flock before we press the uh, the uh, the other sweatshirt. I'm waiting for my heat press to warm up. So I'm just gonna show you guys. So I never I never get the holes completely, you know, like cut off or cut out. I don't know if you can see. There's still like a lot of holes left. So when it's that many, because I mean, it's a whole lot still. When it's that many, sometimes what I do is I will just push it back down. And then I'll take my brayer and I'll just kind of like go over it. Just, I'm just trying to get the holes to stick down. Sometimes it makes a difference. Sometimes it doesn't. But for the most part... See, it kind of made a little bit of a difference, but not really. Um, so what I do is I just kind of pull it down and I use my mat to get the rest of the holes off my cutting mat. And I will show you what that looks like. So this is the end of the first piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it right here so I don't have to work with a huge piece of block and I'm being careful to make sure I don't cut the other holes but this is why I peel it back first 
so that I can make sure I don't cut the holes. So here's the first piece and there's still, um, like I said, a lot of holes or a lot of dots left. So what I do to get those off is I will put it on my mat like this. To get the rest of the dots off. Um, some people cut the flock with the backing um, off of it. But for me, that it just ends up being a mess when I do it that way. So that's why I never do it that way. I take my brayer tool. Let me make sure you guys can see. Yeah, I take my brayer tool and I just kind of push it down because I want the dots to stick to the mat. And then I pull it down in a downwards motion slowly um, just to make sure that the holes don't rip and there's still a couple that are sticking so what I do as I'm pulling is I will take my tweezers and just pick them off as I'm going but you want to make sure you're doing this part gently because you don't want to rip your holes and I'm just pulling it down and I'm looking at the holes as I'm going there's one here still. There's one here still. There's one here. There's a few here. And these are just some um, Cricut tweezers I got in a, you know, weeding tool set. They're, but they're the pointy ones. So when it comes to the flock, it's definitely um, beneficial to have the, um, the pointy ones. It makes it easier to grab the dots. There's one there. I definitely so I have the silhouette the 24 inch one and AJ from Kingdom Touches she told me to try to use that machine because I mean I really don't like that machine at all um, but she told me to use it to cut the flock she said it cuts her flock really well so I'm gonna give it a try I just haven't set it back up like you know, once I boxed it up and stuff, I, um, well, not boxed it up, but once I, like, took it down and stopped using it, I have to find the cord to it, and I just haven't gotten around to it, but once I find the cord to it, I'm going to set up the silhouette, the 24-inch cutter, and I'm going to try to, uh, cut my rhinestone flock with my silhouette 24-inch. And then I'm going to show you what I do with the, uh, the cardstock. So this is the cardstock I showed you earlier. I just take a piece off. And then I just kind of place it on there like that. And then I will trim the edges. Um, as needed so and you don't have to trim the edges if you don't want to I just do it just so that you know my template looks better but you don't have to OK, 
okay and that's my first layer that's my template for my first layer so I'm gonna do this for all of them um, but I'm not gonna do it right right this second because my heat press is warmed up and ready to go so we're gonna go ahead over here and we're gonna get our shirt pressed out I mean our sweatshirt pressed out <clears throat> okay so here is the sweatshirt you guys when I went so there was um a trip that me and my family took maybe two years ago um we went up to I live in Michigan so we went up to Boyne Falls which is in Michigan we drove up to Boyne Falls in Michigan and you know we just kind of spent the week weekend up there and while I was up there we went to Walmart do you know the Walmart had it was a one dollar sale so this sweatshirt that I have right here this I got this at Walmart for one dollar two years ago crazy right and I never wore it I was actually going through like I have boxes and boxes and boxes of um shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts and stuff like this and I found this one and I was like oh I never made anything with this so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one okay that looks good I'm just gonna give it a quick 10 second pre-press and the first one we're going to do is going to be the outline the press i'm using is the htv ron auto press i get questions about this all the time it's HTV Ron. I do have some content on my channel in regards to this heat press. So definitely, uh oh, my stones turned over. Definitely check out my um, the content on my channel if you would like to know more information about this heat press. But one of my stones turned over, so I gotta flip it back. Okay. Okay, so I am just going to line this up first. I kind of eyeball it. You can use the t-shirt, um, the t-shirt ruler or the, um, um, the little, I can't think of the name of the thing. And then I'm going to press that for 15 seconds at 315 degrees. Just waiting for it to press and it is auto so the top goes up and comes down on its own and then I just kind of take a t-shirt make sure all the stones are nice and pushed down before I pull the transfer tape off it is a hot peel so I don't wait too long I just make sure they're all you know nice and pushed down And it looks like one of my stones came off on this K. So I'm going to put a stone there. When I go to do my other presses, I'm just going to grab a stone out of here. And place it there like that. And then when I go to... When I go to press it, um, it should press just fine. All right. Now I'm going to do the second layer, which is the top part of God. And I have an extra stone there. I don't know how I didn't see that extra stone. Okay, 
and this is going to be the top part of the G so we are just going to line it up and I'm gonna cover because see these stones and these stones are exposed I don't want them to get messed up from the heat press so I'm gonna cover them to protect them and then we're gonna go ahead and press again for 15 seconds at 315 degrees and I'm gonna get my third layer here and my Yep, my parchment paper always sticks to the top of my heat press every time. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. Make sure they're all nice and pressed down. And go ahead and peel it off. All that tanzanite looks so good. All right, and then our last layer. And you want to make sure this lines up because this is going to have some stones that are like up here. I want to add another stone right here. I'm going to add a um, black diamond stone in this spot right here. stone I can't get it let's try that again when it comes to um rhinestones these tweezers literally save my life every single time okay that looks good And then before you do your last press, just kind of look over it. Make sure you're not missing any stones because this is where you would go ahead and add them in. Just like how I did here. If you're missing any stones, if the last layer has any stones out of place, this is where you want to do it because this is going to be the last press. So everything looks good. And we're going to go ahead and cover it again to protect the other stones that are uncovered. And this is going to be our last press, 315 degrees for... 15 seconds don't forget to join my facebook group guys i will have it linked down below all of my materials will be linked down below um the rhinestones the template everything i will try to make sure i link everything down below for you guys so definitely check the description box if you have any questions that looks so good Right, and then I'm just going to pull that back. Wow. Do y'all see that? Wow. Do you guys remember when I was on Patrice's live and I blinked for the first time ever and I didn't even have a brush and I had to make a brush? Now look at me. I'm just out here blinging now. I'm addicted. That looks so, so good. All right. Well, you guys, that is all I have for this video. Um, I may do the other shirt that i was cutting i think i may do that like on instagram or tiktok so or i may do it on instagram and tiktok um so definitely follow me to see that shirt if you guys want me to do that that template in a full video comment down below and i will go ahead and do a full tutorial on that layered template it was five layers 
Um, but like I said, I'm going to record an Instagram reel for it as well as a TikTok. So follow me there. But that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time, bye.